Good morning. Today I want us just to go back again to Revelation chapter 6. In the past we have discovered that there was two time prophecies given. And these time prophecies are bound in time. The first one was Daniel 9 verse 24 through to 27. And it pointed us to the first coming of Jesus Christ. And to his ministry there. And to the Jewish dispensation of time. Then in Daniel chapter 8 verse 14, our attention was drawn to another period of time, the 2,300 years, which also started in 457 BC and as we've discovered ends in 1844 CE. In Revelation chapter 6, we discovered that there were heralds that pointed towards the coming of Jesus Christ. Remember how that each phase of time as the church went through this dark period into the future each period of time looked forward to the coming of christ and how did we discover that these people who had gone through this great tribulation longed for the coming and actually asked the question how long lord until you avenge our blood and then we get these wonderful heralds that point to the fact that there is a coming in the future it's interesting that around this period of 1844, a person by the name of William Miller, he was a farmer, in his search of scripture and in his longing for Christ to come, he discovered that this period of time was pointing to something that was crucial and he actually announced that in 1844, that Christ would come in the clouds of heaven as he had promised. And you know, as I look at the scriptures, I almost have the same, draw the same conclusion as William Miller did. I want you to notice in Revelation chapter 6, that we had in, Revela in verse 9, the fifth seal which pointed towards this 1260 period of dark ages of great tribulation. And I want you just to take note of that. It's, it's the great tribulation time. Then just after that, we opened up the sixth seal and the sixth seal revealed us to us the, the heralds that pointed our attention towards something that was coming. And we had the great um, earthquake of Lisbon. We had the sun and moon that uh, lost their light. And then we had the stars that were falling. And the la last one, the stars falling, fell in 1833 CE. So everything was pointing towards this important time. And I want you to notice that this time period is bound in time. Straight after that, in verse 15, we read these words. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and every free man hid in caves and amongst the rocks of the mountains. They called to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? Dear friends, when we read these words here, it's quite clear that the next great event to take place in time was the coming of Jesus Christ. That's what we read there. They ask for the mountains to fall on them. Why? Because to hide them from the one who sits on the throne, which was the Ancient of Days, and from the wrath of the Lamb. You must remember, as we've discovered, that we need to find our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, in order to know if what we are looking at is important, I always believe that we should go back to the very chapters where Christ himself predicts the future. And I want you to notice something. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus draws our attention in verse 21 to this great tribulation time. It says there, for then there will be great dis distress, unequal from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. So we see quite clearly that Christ points our attention towards this specific event in this time period. But then he says further, and I want you to take notice of this in verse 29. Immediately after the distress of those days, immediately after the distress of those days, he says, The sun will be darkened, 
the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. So straight away he also draws our attention to the Lisbon earthquake, the sun and the moon that turned dark and the stars that fell. And we see quite clearly that Christ is taking us along this timeline. It's also interesting that during this time period, he warns us that we are to be careful of false Christs and false prophets. But then I want us to go to verse 30. Now verse 30 is taking us beyond this time period. And it says there in verse 30, At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. We've just read that in Revelation chapter 6. It says further, they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. You will recall how that in Daniel chapter 7, we saw that Christ was given power after he had done his administrate or his ministerial work here. He was taken into the presence of the Father. He stands before the Ancient of Days pleading on behalf of mankind. And power is given to him to decide the destiny of mankind. And we see here quite clearly with power and great glory. So our attention is drawn to the fact that what Christ envisions as the next great event was the second coming. The question is asked then at the end of Revelation chapter 6. Who can stand in this great day? It says there. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? Dear friends, I want you to understand that there was nothing stopping the second coming of Christ as far as prophecy was concerned. But the condition of mankind, they were not yet ready. So we find that what is happening here, and it's revealed to us in Revelation chapter 7, and I want to take your, draw your attention to it. It says, after this, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or in a tree. I want you to notice we're not looking at the opening of the seventh seal. We are looking at something that is taking place in the end of the sixth seal. And what we see there is four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, ready to allow havoc to take place on the earth. It was in their power to destroy the earth. But then it says in verse 2, Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. So we see from the east, and we are counseled in God's word, that whenever there was this talking about the coming of Christ, it would always be from the east. And we see here, then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. So we find that there's a question asked here, who can stand? And all of a sudden we are um, exposed to a sealing period. It says there, he called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. And he says these words in verse 3. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. So we see here quite clearly that this period of time that we've moved into, Christ could have come, but we were not ready. So a probation time is granted man. A time of the tilling of the soil again, a time of feeding the tree, a time of pruning branches, because we are to, to have fruit. Like the fig tree, we must bear fruit. So we see how that this angel comes down and he has a special ministry at this moment. And we are in the time period of the sealing and of the cleansing. So we find ourselves in this period of time when God is assessing our value. If we are ready to, to be received at the second coming. I want to jump back again to, to, um, to Matthew chapter 24. And I want you to notice that Christ says something quite interesting in verse 31. He says there, And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather the elect from the four winds, from the end of the heavens to the other. So we see here our attention is drawn again to the four winds. But there is a work to be done before this. Christ is to separate 
the people living on planet earth. Those who are his are referred to as sheep and those who aren't his are referred to as goats. And they both have particular characteristics. Then I want you to notice Jesus says in verse 32, and I want to use this to close off this, this study. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. So all of a sudden Jesus is saying to us, although I have given you two distinct time prophecies, and although I was supposed to come in 1844, I want you to learn a lesson from the fig tree. So all of a sudden he's drawing our attention again to the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. So he's saying that the moment we see the fruits that we are supposed to bear, not these window dressing aspects, but the moment genuine fruit is revealed, the moment we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our mind, with our whole being, the moment we love one another, the moment we see this, you must know that the end is near, that Jesus will be ready to come in the clouds of heaven. So you see here, it says, even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. And I want you to understand, dear friends, that when I look at this, my attention is drawn to the fact that we've moved beyond fixed time periods. And now we are depending on the condition of man. Are we ready? And only those who are ready will receive the seal. I want to go to Revelation chapter 21 and I want to read there a very interesting thing. I, uh, in Revelation chapter 21, I'm going to be reading from verse um, 26. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Now it's talking about the new Jerusalem where the, the saints of God will be going to. And then it says this, nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful. So we see quite clearly that there is a behavior that is expected of God's people. Then it says these words, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So dear friends, right here I notice some very interesting things taking place. We are being cleansed at this moment through the fiery trials of life. We are given a probation time period and the probation time period is for two things. The separation, the sifting from good from bad and then the seal of God to be placed on the children that belong to him. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about what's happening to those who don't choose him. But right here we see it says very clearly but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life will have access to the coming of Jesus Christ. Only those people will be ready. Dear friends, God has granted us since 1844, probation time period. And the purpose of this pe time period is to save us. Let us not waste this valuable time. Let us choose Christ now. Because never in the history of the world was there ever a time period when we can expect the coming of Christ as now. The word makes it very clear. Come Lord Jesus. And we want him to come. But we need to be ready. God bless you.